Today the Custom Nation battle continues. Players from my community face off with custom nations that they made. Who will come out on top? Who will be betrayed? And who will be the most overpowered nation of them all? Figure out today on Habibi's Daycare. I actually had a lot of players that died to AI straight up. Like, same thing with Jaffa. This was Lavad, which in Hebrew is actually alone. That's what uh, Lavad means. I hope everyone in chat is doing good today. We're a spectator Andy. But we are back, boys. Finally, we are back to the Custom Nations battle. We had a one-week hiatus where we didn't do it. The players are still in a stage of building. Prussia and Exile is being taken over by Slimy, and he's he's blobbing, dude. He's he's on a blobbing spree. He's now in a war against Uzbek. Should be fine, though. Oh, Molly just... <gasps> No! Where's your army? Bro, you got this. Send it. You got this. You can live. His army got stack wiped. <gasps> oh no, his army got stack wiped. Guys, this is probably one of the biggest betrayals. We knew there was the triangle of African trust. And there you go. Yeah, Molly can just peace out. Oh my god, the Senate. Will he recover from this? Meanwhile, we have players doing really good here in Europe. We have Storm and uh, Peasant Balkan Uprising doing really good. And look at this, Trifing, he's blocking off the New World. He doesn't want them to be expanding into the into England. Camelot, the kingdom uh, King of Arthur. Dude, why? Oh, that's the biggest lost opportunity of all time. Why is not every single one of your leaders named Arthur? Yo, what happened to Slime, dude? What's going on, Slime? Look at his nation. He's nation ruining. Slime. Prussia yeah, and Exile. Who is the sub on Prussia and Exile. He's AFK. He has 99 nine nine ADM, nine nine mil power. He, he fucking decked the war and then went AFK. Yeah, I don't know. He's nation ruining, bro. He's uh, the uh, separatists are about to get the win. He's about to lose a bunch of land. <laughs> Mr. Dino, Mr. Potato. Oh, he's more focused on the south. That's why. But he needs to annex Delhi. He's still annexing him. It's taking him forever to annex because it's a huge ass vassal. But once he annexes, he'll be one of the top powers. Parsipar is still growing significantly, and they're going to be a top contender. And this New World invasion, as we thought, it's a little bit premature. They're not ready yet. The New World nations aren't ready for their invasion yet. Their boats aren't good enough. They're not making enough money. Look, like even Nova Phoenicia, they're making an the, uh, income of 13. Aliens is making a lot of money, but that's because of his gold mines. He has inflation increasing. He's making. He's probably the highest income out of all players. Um, I wish we could see that, but we can't because we have limited ledger. Can we see a religious map? Sure. Uh, my favorite is the block of Shinto and the block of Confucianism here. It's actually not even a block. It's only one province, and then he harmonized. He harmonized Catholicism. I don't know why he would do this ever, but you know he's Thanos beatbox. Maybe that's just his goal. But he's harmonizing Christian, which gives him. Minus five stability cost modifier. Ooh. Ah, he took 33 years to do this chat. Well, well, he did also get religious unity with everyone around, and he doesn't need to convert like these guys over here. They're converting like madmen. There's selective integration right now. I think he's dropping all the way down to isolationism so he can get the reduced missionaries and culture conversion cost. In my opinion, one of the most big brain uh, uh, custom ideas is on aliens. Look at this chat. He has stacked minus 25 religious intolerance, uh, minus 25 war score versus other religions, and strong negotiators, which is minus 20 province war score. That means once it's age of discovery, the guy is going to have 75 provincial war score, which means he can freaking vassalize a 400 dev nation. Oh, and look, Galactic Horde has finally helped out his ally. Oh, even Halalville is here. They've decided to help out their ally. Okay, the left, our African alliance is back on. And by the way, Halalville can cross the desert. Ooh, this is a defensive war. Oh, play a war! Play a war! Play a war! Play a war! Let's go! But this is a player war. We have... Oh my god. Uh, it's Hormuz, Archimedes... Uh, Ar 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 no, not Archimedes, sorry. Achaemenids, sorry, sorry. Armenia, Baluchistan... Halalville, Karakalunyu, Yemen on the offensive versus uh, Parsipars and... No, wait, no. These guys are all on the defensive. Wait, what? 
How's Parsi Pars gonna win this? He must have a plan. He must know that Halalville is here in the new in West Africa. What is his response? And look at that. He's walking around with a 10,000 cannons in 1502, bro. Dude, how is he gonna win this? A Kamenid's joined and he's in the north already sieging. He has a plan. He has a plan. He's sieging this fort right now. It's on a 21%. Let's go let's go into his perspective. Chat, who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? Parsi Pars, he's the aggressor, versus Halalville, Hormuz, and Akamanids. Put in your bets now. Also, you YouTube viewers, put in your bets. Who's gonna win? Don't skip ahead. So he can take out 13,000 golden loans. He's got 60,000 men. And now the numbers are looking a little bit more even. You also gotta remember that this side has like five players, and one of the players is, is caught up in a war in, in West Africa. So this is probably the moment where Parsi Pars is going to try to distinguish himself from other players. We, breaking news, we have a big player war. Vindaloo, Sweden, the Anarcho Prime Commune are declaring war on Lost Karelia. Lost Karelia has uh, Heavenly Kingdom, Hawaii, and Ning. So we have a three versus four player war, three versus three player war, three versus three player war going on in China. And then not only that, look at what's going on Castile in this universe. Mexico invades you, Spain. The freaking New World Nations, they're here. They're attacking Spain. Alien saw, alien saw in chat. No player in Spain, Keck. Oh man. Oh man, dude. And now Spain is in war with the New World and New Prussia. Aliens is in here too. Look at that. Aliens is in here and they're invading. How did they even get their people here? Do they have an island somewhere? They must have used access from all their allies. And then now England again is at war with Camelot. Hopefully this time Camelot can actually get more war score. I hope he can do that. But let's look back at the player war. That's what's more important, right, chat? The player war. This is already... Aliens obviously got this. He's got he's got the number advantage. Let's just look at the numbers real quick. All right, chat? Yeah, he's already winning. He's already winning. Look at this. He's got 91,000 men on his side. The sunset invasion has begun. Sweden is walking into the lands of Lost Karelia. Guys, you got to keep in mind that with this mod to balance multiplayer wars, all you have to do is fully annex the main war goal. So... Lost Karelia, all you have to do is fully annex him and you will get 100% war score. Obviously, you can't take anything from his allies if you don't also control part of his allies. But that does mean you can take eat up the land of Lost Karelia. He can eat it all up. They're here. They're ready to battle. And Yunnan is a Highlands province. Yes, I got that right without even looking. Yunnan is a Highlands province. Let's look at the river crossing. They have no river crossing. Remember, chat. Simple terrain is pog. Oh, no, there is a river crossing. So yeah, you should go first with this stack. Go first with this stack because there's no river crossing here. Are they going to try to catch? It doesn't look like it. They're not trying to catch the reinforcements. Anarcho Prime is coming down. And there's actually a battle going on right here. And the Vindaloo wins it. Despite being on a non-flat land. Here it goes. Here it goes. Sweden with a three-star general. Four fire, five shock. Great general. But he might get the siege. If he gets the siege before the battle, the battle is already for the Indians. It's not even a joke. <gasps> the rebels saved the day. The rebels saved the day. We don't even have to roll the dice. Oh, no. We, we might still have to. Yeah. Oh, God. That's... That's unfortunate. This is looking really bad for Lost Karelia. And the reinforcements don't even go in. This might even be a stack wipe. This might be even a stack wipe. It's 21st. You got two more days stack wipe. No, it's not a stack wipe. Hawaii can retreat. They have one more fort. They have morale of armies. They have 10 discipline. Never mind. They have 125 discipline. Oh, they're Prussian. Holy moly. They are stacking the discipline. That was a really fast war. But remember, even though he's unconditional, they can't take anything from his allies. The, main the only one that loses here is Lost Karelia. His allies tried to hold. Jay tried to hold. But the, the army quality of the Indians, as well as the horde power of Vindaloo, is too much to handle. And that is finally going to give Vindaloo his open to start snowballing. Because he's got to start snowballing fast, chat. Hordes fall off fast. Especially in multiplayer. Wait, did any of you guys notice that Castile is being sieged yeah. down? What do you want me to do about it? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's I'm nothing you guys can do. He's got really 80k bad. troops. I mean, like, I'm, I'm planning a crusade against Jerusalem. So I guess he's just feeding. And yes, player vassals are allowed. Player marches are not allowed. And player PUs are not allowed. So this is totally fair game. It's 1507. 
Aliens at number 3, Purge at number 4, Halalville at 7, New Galactic Horde at 8. Oh, and uh, Bavaria is winning his war against Wakanda. Oh, Wakanda, you may have messed up here. Despite the huge coalition. Holy moly, how's he alive? Ooh, look at this battle right here. We have 41, 7,000 versus almost 100,000. Denmark is going to reinforce. The thing is, though, uh, Huang Li is rolling a zero and then rolled a one, but he could possibly still hold. He has 4.8 morale. It's all about the front line. This is all about the front line. Nope, the front line fell apart. Look at that. Look at that. This is what Bavaria is dealing with. Luckily, he has an AI France, and he has one of the strongest players, the uh, anime fan, uh, fan club. Even though they're not on the highest dev, they have pretty significant max manpower. If we look at uh, max manpower, our highest player max manpower is anime fan club. Actually, if we take off players, anime fan club is a world power. Anime fan club is a freaking world power, chat. Let's see, look at Portugal. Oh, he did it. How did he do this? It could be possible he just got a new Diplotech. But look, this is the thing we were saying. Aliens is continuing his sunset invasion. He didn't get Lisboa, but he does have Beja, Avora, Ritabejo, and Algarve. And now he's sieging down Tlemcen, which means he's going to be going for North Africa. This guy is going for it, dude. He's making the way for freaking Cairo, man. He's going for it. Yeah, but yeah, Bavaria is still fighting their coalition war. Of course, Bavaria, like we said, this is a player um, who basically formed Bavaria, most likely for the mission tree. Uh, he still has his custom ideas. He did. He's debating us with this Bavarian ideas right here. But as you can see, these are not Bavarian standard ideas. I wish Bavarian ideas had 20 core cost reduction in the start. Um, but uh, he's winning though. Uh, in terms of one battles, yeah, it's mostly from one battles. Thirty. He's got 23 war score just from one battles. And he's taking another battle here. This is a big one. Uh, again, they have the morale advantage. Both sides have equal discipline, so that means their tactics is the same. And um, oh no, the Fre the French side just has full cannons. Um, whose cannons are these? Oh, yep, they're gonna win this battle. They're gonna win it. Yeah, there's no front line on the other side, which means they win. Let's see his heir. What is this? Anime Fan Club has killed five of his sons and finally has a 545. And his name is Yu. <laughs> what? Wait, what is his name? Yonki Lianfin Kluklik. Oh my god, why did you do this, man? <laughs> Anyways, though, back to the actual content that 90% of you are here. Um. There is a battle uh, going on, a war between uh, the Indians again and Muraz, which is this, uh, which is the Heavenly Kingdom. This time, I think the co the war goal is on the Heavenly Kingdom. Yeah. So, uh, Lost Karelia actually does not join. Oh, they're no longer allies, and this is could be really, really scary for them. They're actually gonna go take a battle on mountains. They're not afraid. No, no, that was a fake. That was a fake by Sweden. He's trying to fake them. Maybe if they overstack, they can take a good battle, even if there is 20k there. Whoa, big battle. Big battle here in Hung Zhao. They decided to take it anyways. Here comes re reinforcements from Vindaloo. But remember, when Vindaloo comes in, the entire army does 25 less shock damage. It doesn't matter though, because they overstacked. Exactly what I was worried about. They overstacked, the front line disintegrated, and not only that, they have no longer have a front line. That's it, the battle's over. Oh, no, here comes in another reinforcement stack. The re front line's reinforced. Another reinforcement stack. Maybe if this reinforcement stack can make it, as well as this one, maybe there's hope. But um, at this point, it's actually the attackers who are overstacking. There's right now uh, 5,000 men in the reserves of this battle. Uh, and here comes another one, the front line. The front line, which looked like it was almost disintegrated, is re completely reinforced. However, here comes Delhi, and their morale is getting dangerously low. Here comes more units. More units are still coming in. Kingdom of St. Michael's. Oh, no. The battle is over. The battle is over. Persia declared war on the Anarchal Prime Commune. Dude, these guys are spicing it up in the last 10 minutes. What is this? We're going to end the session on Player Wars. Another major battle here, and it's not looking good. It's not looking good for the Heavenly Kingdom. Heavenly Kingdom is losing uh, this battle. Uh, Sweden is reinforcing. He's reinforcing uh, semi-properly, still doing it. Here comes in more from St. Michael and Boomland. Actually, no! Anarcho Prime Monkeys is not here. Neither is Adeli. Both are trying to move back. So they actually might lose this battle. If these troops can reinforce in time, they should. 28th of April. Ooh, actually, wait. Someone scorched earth. Someone scorched earth. They might actually win this battle. 
No, this this pro the ones from this province are going to make it. It's not looking good for Sweden. They might want to look for a peace deal because Anarcho Prime Monkeys are not even there. Persia is going for the opening. Parsi Pars is in his second player war in this session. And they, just like that, they lost the battle. They lost the battle. Sweden lost this battle. They're retreating back and Persia is pushing on this side. This is what happens when you commit to one side too aggressively. Other players, they'll look for the opening and they'll take it. He's basically combined just the most OP uh, things together. He has dev cost, morale of armies, artillery fire. The thing he's missing though is manpower, manpower um, recovery as well as force limit. Us in the uh, the EU4 MP, I think good lobbies, they use max manpower to scope the strength of a nation instead of development. And this is the reason why. You have anime fan club, with 382 development. If you look at the development, 382 puts him like in 10th or 12th place in terms of development. In terms of players, he's still up there in the top eight. But and if you look at Max Manpower, he's literally number one. He has higher manpower than freaking Mamluks. And if you see right here, look at that. He's getting like 7,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 10,000 from that one province. This is all... Uh, provinces he's getting manpower from. Anyways, big battle happening on, and there's a minus three for Sweden, and he's reinforcing. Is the province raised? The province is not raised. If Persia somehow was able to get that province raised, he would be in a lot better position here. I think he would have wiped one of these armies. Well, not wiped, but destroyed them. But as you can see, the Indians are now reinforcing, and that's where they can turn the tide. The, uh, the front line of uh, Persia is already crumbling, and the, they have right now 10,000 in retreat, so yeah, they're gonna fall behind. That being said, they're now, they've decided to, instead of focusing on the pesky Chinese, they're now gonna go uh, west and focus on Persia. However, we have this dude here with 10 cannons, Boomland with 10 cannons. Does he have a siege modifier? It'd be funny if he had a siege modifier. Alright, I'm disappointed. He has a lot of modifiers to cannons, like artillery fire plus one, artillery back row, from uh, artillery damage from back row. Plus fire damage, artillery combat ability. If the defender still controls the province, they get ticking war score. So it's a good thing that it shows superiority war. Just another reminder, Vindaloo is a Khanate. He has nomadic tech group. Someone who DC'd Prussia and Exile. We just let it be because the player, the Axel, the player that was on this, he picked up Russia in the Zlevik lobby. So he's like, oh, I don't have time for that many lobbies. I'm in school. So I can't play in Prussia and Exile anymore. So we just let it be as it was. It was nation ruined by a sub, unfortunately. But it is what it is, chat. And now Prussia and Exile, one of the best starts in the game, are now out of the running. As you can see, there's no player there. Why don't rush Vindulu cap? Because the CB is show superiority. You got to remember that on the Indian side, on the Chinese side, it's show superiority. If they go try to siege Vindulu's capital, Sweden, Vindulu. Delhi, their parents, their mom, their granddad, their, their cousins, their uncles, they all can come into this battle right here and stack wipe uh, this 12k stack and get 10% war score even though they don't have any forts. Remember chat, so superiority is about battles. So that's why this is actually smart, them going down here and sieging more and basically giving them more war exhaustion, reducing their money and making it so they start having to take loans. Let's, like as you can see everyone on the India side is gonna have to take loans soon. They haven't taken loans yet There's the first one. There's the first loan on anarcho prime commune then in Sweden He's also minus nine. He has a little bit more stocked up though. Bindaloo. Let's see if he's in debt Bindaloo is in about two loans of debt and remember hordes cannot take burger loans one of the downside of hordes and multiplayer burger loans are so quant quintessential in MP Dude, the, the stats are actually crazy. What is this? 4.6 morale, 4.3 morale, 125 discipline, 136. But I think they're still winning somehow. I wasn't really paying attention. I kind of zoned out there for two seconds. I'm not going to lie. Here comes the oh, front line. Okay, so here's the problem. They have a full back row. Even though... I'm not purposely rhyming here, chat. Even though it's on tech 10, which means it's still you're still rocking Paderos and... Uh, 
and culverines still better than uh bronze cannons bronze cannons literally only get one or three of them chat never get a full back row of bronze cannons man but culverines yeah you can get a get a full back row of culverines that's worth that's worth if you can afford it and sweden he can afford it he's one of the richest players as we were covering last session he's able to cover 78 men he's only at minus eight totally not weird at all are some of these mercenaries they're running low on manpower. I'm worried for them in terms of manpower. That's the main resource here. It seems that money doesn't seem a problem for the Indians, but manpower is getting scarily low. The Anarcho Prime monkeys have less than 15k men on the field. Fielded right now. And they're still losing money, and Delhi is disloyal. A big battle on Halalville. Halalville's quality is nowhere near as good as these guys' quality. He seems a little bit out of his league. No offense, Andy. But he's running back all the way to Africa. Take me home! Country Road! West Ethiopia! <laughs> Roe Ro is still being sieged and there's a battle. Vindulu has jumped on first. He's on- he's a horde, so he's not doing as much shock damage, but here come in the rest of the boys. But they all get the shock modifier. Oh no, maybe Vindaloo shouldn't have went in on this battle. And let Sweden carry. Sweden is literally carrying India right now. Sweden is carrying India so hard. Sweden coming in on row, but Persia still has stacks. Go reinforce Persia. Is he not going to reinforce with the 50,000? Are they just going to stand here? Is he AFK? Find out next time. <laughs> but seriously, okay, he's reinforcing with the full 50k now. But the battle that's going on is the, the province uh, raised. No, the province I don't think is raised. It's not a raised province, so that means he will most. <gasps> he is gonna reinforce just in time. That was so close, and oh, unfortunately the Indians row is gonna get siege down, and that means these guys, the Anarcho Prime commune, might be in a very sticky situation. Who's? What is the war goal? What is the war goal? It's on Anarcho Prime monkeys for what is it, chat? What is it? The war goal is for take gore which province is gore it's right here i can see someone paid tax but i don't know it works whoa 100k troops running into the mountains no it's not even it's a desert why are you standing there you should be standing back even more this is no good they're now going to be taking battle on flatlands maybe vindaloo can do something but vindaloo only has 20k troops again it's sweden carrying the the indian boys really hard and we're on the front line and persia has a full back row that's a full back row, boys. Where is these guys' cannons? Where is your cannons? Okay, the cannons are coming in right now. And there you go. They have now a full back row, but it's all messed up. They have no front line. Okay, another front line came in, but there's cannons in the front line. There's cannons in the front line that need to go back into the back line. But the battle is still raging on. They're actually holding. They're holding. Oh, because they now have the bonus. The bonus affects the entire army. That's the plus side of fighting with a horde. Your entire army gets the bonus. Defenders receive a plus 25 shock damage. And it's still the phase where shock damage is very impactful. You should wait for the month tick. You should wait for the month tick. Heavenly Kingdom got... Is uh, unconditionally oh, surrendering to the Chinese. That's it. They've decided, all right, we're focusing on the Persians. And that's what they should have done in the beginning. Someone had to just bite the bullet so they can focus on one side. Then go on the other side when the truce is over. AJ underscore brackets, I think. Oh, and anime fan club on the other hand has a huge coalition that's about to form against him he should be able to hold it off with his allies as long as his ally ottomans join the war he should be fine um and and then over here we have the stalemate that is uh the stalemate of india they're basically giving these guys time to rebuild their manpower but it's a um it's basically a stalemate on the fort of Ro. It's, this is a very common situation if you play in India, uh, in North India, and you're fighting against the Persia player, Timurids, Persia, whatever player is here. Fighting on Ro is a very common place, and it seems that's where they're going to hold their ground. We have quantity, economic quality. Wow, very surprising. But um, it's the Anarcho Prime monkeys are actually moving forward to Kabul. It is mountains. Oh, they are going to engage on Jalabad. And Delhi is loyal again. But here come the Indians. Okay, never mind. He's not engaging. And this is 117,000 men 
on a province that can only hold 17,000 men. Oh my god, these guys are going to start attritioning so hard. The aliens have declared war. They've done the unthinkable and turned on their allies. They've declared war on Nova Phoenicia, United States of Dixie, and New Israel. They want to get them out. And they are the attackers, right? They are attacker, yeah. So this is looking very scary for these guys, considering that the aliens have uh, the bow advantage despite being alone. Oh, Ohio's on their side as well. Oh, God. Ohio's on their side. Ohio. Better Sweden. New Prussia is a, is, a, is a vassal. West Indish Company is on their side too. So it seems United States of Dixie, as well as New Israel and Nova Phoenicia, are, have to hold their ground against the aliens. So another player war has fired off. Holy moly. How does he have claims on all of this? Wait, 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 wait. What? <gasps> He has missions. He has custom missions because he's a New World Nation with High American. Invade Ireland. Get permanent claim on Britain region. Invade France, which he did right here. Get a permanent claim on France region. Invade Spain, which he did. He gets permanent claim on Spain region. Oh, God, dude. An alien invasion of Europe has already begun. They Nova Phoenicia have lost their land in Ireland. Camelot has conquered that. But the worry is no longer Nova Phoenicia. Right, because that was first what people were like, oh, New World are going to come in from, from England. Nova Phoenicia already has an Irish vassal. Nope. It came in, in as the form of the aliens. They killed a player. New Prussia was a player. They came. They killed AI Portugal. They killed AI Castile. Now it's time to kill AI Aragon and AI Naples. And now he has borders with Falconia Reborn soon, with Nice soon. With Giga Pumper soon. So it's getting very interesting, chat. Very, very interesting. The stalemate continues in row. This is a stalemate of many years. How long has this war been going on? It's been going for nine years. The stalemate's finally broken. Persia's gonna go for it. Oh, and then our uh, peasant Balkan uprising peaced out, giving one province to Falconia reborn. So that player war is over. The Nova Phoenicia aliens player war is still going on, and I have desynced. Oh, yikes. Oh, no. Okay, they're not going anymore. The poor man still has an integrated deli. <laughs> Five more years, chat. Five more years. See you later, great chat, deli. Yeah, do do you, dude. Do it. Okay. But if I'm allowed to don't do... Uh, Alright, whatever. Just do you. Oh, here we go. No attacking, no attacking uh, for me. Oh, no. oh my god. Oh, look at this oh. Guys. oh my god. It's disgusting. Anarcho Prime monkeys living up to the name with all these rebellions. Anime fan club still has a coalition against him. Not too big this time. It's really tough being a Shinto nation with Manchu culture in the middle of HRE. I tell you that. And not only that, I recently figured out the Manchu culture provinces you can raise banners in. Yeah, raise banners. He can raise 21 banners here. No, 21 banners total. Yeah, he has banners. He's a freaking Anatolian tech. He's freaking Anatolian tech with Shinto. And freaking banners. Oh my god, I didn't even realize that. The player of Bavaria has already been dead. We, we missed that at some point, but here he is dying even more, chat.